everyone, I'm the Herpin Kid and welcome to our journey where we explore snakes, their relatives and the world's growing passion for these magnificent creatures. Again, apologies for the background. For the next few videos until about January 11th, uh, this will be the background. Apologies for that. However, after that we will be going back to our normal background, hopefully. Um, and yeah, it's just sort of rainy. Before we start, I would like to say, besides that, that we will be only filming or posting one video per week until the 11th of January 2021. Be reason being is that I'm going on holiday until then and we will then be going back to the regular Monday and Friday posting schedule. Uh, we will be posting every Monday as opposed to Friday. Don't ask me why, that's just how I thought of it. Um, yeah. But today we will be profiling the Byburn's stiletto snake. This snake is quite special. Um, but yeah, let's get into the identification. They grow up to about 70 centimeters, I almost said meters, goodness. 70 centimeters long. They're generally brown to a very dark, dark brown uh, in color, and they have a whitish underbelly. They also have comically small eyes, uh, not as small as the vibrant blind snake, but pretty small. In terms of distribution, they are found in the Free State, Limpopo, Mpumalanga, Gauteng, uh, Northwest, and KwaZulu Natal. Their habitats are underground. Simple as that, they live underground. It's not necessarily in a specific habitat, underground, but they just live underground. In terms of diet, what they eat, they eat small lizards, uh, young rodents, and often other snakes. Now these don't always drop into their underground burrows, but when they do, they make an opportunity of it. Speaking of, they only really surface at rainy nights or really damp, cold nights to hunt. They don't really surface in any other time of year or day. So activity. They are nocturnal. As I said before, they only really surface at night. <laughs> but we can just hop straight into their venom. They have a pretty potent cytotoxin. And... Honestly, it's pretty bad if people get bitten. Majority of cases end in an amputation or at least a fascia, fasciotomy, um, which is a decompressive surgery if you have a lot of swelling and stuff, not necessarily only in snake bites, but often found in puff adder, gaboon adder, or other adder bites. Um, typically, that's the minimum that you'll get away with is... Um, an amputation or a fasciotomy, which can be pretty bad. Um, so these aren't things you want to mess with. But something that makes these guys especially special is that they have rotating fangs, meaning there's no safe way to handle them uh, unless you've got really dense gloves or gloves made specifically for snakes. You can't always trust these, I promise you. If you trust them with something like a king cobra, they may well penetrate through, so just be careful. But with them, they have proportionately large fangs, but relatively small, because it's only large in comparison to their body length. Um, but the rotating means that if you grab it behind the head, it can just poke it out of the side and wham, they got you. So it's pretty dangerous to handle these guys. Yeah, and they can be misidentified for a few different snakes, so be careful. Hit that like button if you enjoyed, and consider subscribing for more snake and animal content, and I will see you next time.